tell if it's like a drum line or like a lion king of sound. Rebecca Bitzer and Associates, our Greenbelt office. Here we are again. Yes. We're going to be cooking up some good stuff. We are cooking up some good stuff. So it's summertime. It's time for barbecues and family and friends gathering together. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that comes with picnics. And some of the things that we're making today are pretty standard. You would find them at a lot of picnics. And one of the things we're making today, which is this really delicious oven fried chicken, is a option when you go to some fast food restaurants and it's really quick and you know a lot of times you can go in five minutes and then you know dinner is taken care of but a lot of times that chicken can be higher in fat it can be higher in salt um, it can be higher in a lot of not so good stuff so today we're going to show you how to make a simple make it home version that's really really easy delicious and healthy mm -hmm. i'm excited yep me okay. too do you want to get started on the chicken? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're also going to be making two other things. Typical side dishes when you're going to a picnic or even stopping at the fast food restaurant. Baked beans, mm -hmm. which you can do in a crock pot, yep. even easier. And then a creamy coleslaw, which we're actually making with yogurt, Greek yogurt, instead of the traditional mayonnaise base. Yes, yep. absolutely. Yeah. All right, so this is the only part that requires a little bit of planning ahead of time, but it is so super simple is marinating the chicken. So all I did was I created our own spice rub. So Kathleen, if you want to get in here to see what spices I use. Of course. So I used onion powder, garlic powder, some chili powder, this is paprika, and then salt and pepper. And this recipe is going to be available on our website later, but basically what I did is I created a spice rub and we have that right here. So what I did was I took some buttermilk which is actually really low in fat and really mm -hmm. good for you and has some great live cultures. Put some of that spice rub in here with the buttermilk and we just let it sit overnight. So it literally takes five minutes of prep, not mm -hmm. even, and you just leave it in the fridge until you're ready to go. Awesome. So then what we want to do next is we want to make the coating. So can I have you assist me? Of course. My lovely assistant. Okay, so what we're doing for this coating is we're gonna use a couple different things. So first thing we're
we're using whole wheat panko. So panko is their type of Japanese breadcrumbs. We're using whole wheat today. Um, They're nice and crispy. They are nice and crispy. They crisp up really, really nicely when you put them in the oven, and they are, let me just turn this on because I will need this in a minute. Um, and what we're just going to do is we're going to put some of this in here. Push it out. that and then we're also going to use some flour you can also use whole wheat flour i just grabbed regular out of my kitchen today but whole wheat would be great here too and then we're going to add some cornmeal which is also going to give it a nice little crunch mm -hmm. all right while we're doing this we did ask um, some viewers through our newsletter mm -hmm. to send them some questions. Yep. So we have a couple questions. The first one is about the chicken. Oh, okay. What's so, the question? Why is baked food more nutritious than fried food? Well, a lot of times when you fry food, and also I'm adding a little bit of the spice mix into here, so we kind of get double whammy from when we are neighbor town, neighbor town when we're mm -hmm. marinating, <laughs> marinating, and then when we are coating it. So the baked food, when we are baking it, we're not adding in all of the extra added oils that you would get when you're frying something. So you can really cut down on some of that saturated fat, which has been shown to increase risk of heart disease, clog up your arteries, make your cholesterol go up, and that's really what we kind of want to try and avoid. Definitely. So we can make something just as crispy, just as delicious in the oven, yep. save on some of that oil, and also save on some of that salt. So, and the money. And the money, definitely. <laughs> this is not an expensive recipe, which is always great. Okay, so we're going to get a little messy now. This is so easy. All you have to do is you take, so we have our little bag, we take... You might have tongs. We're just going to use my hands because hands are a cook's best tool. And so I have here bone, uh, skinless chicken thighs and drumsticks that I just removed the skin from, but the bone is still in. To keep them nice and moist. Yep. So I'm throwing that in. And you could absolutely use white meat or you can use, you know, chicken tenders if you have a pack of those. Just throw it in. Or you can use dark meat if that's what's on sale. All right. So... Now all we need to close do, up, close it up, and you're gonna shake it. Like the shake and bake, but this is our own homemade shake and bake right now, so. All right. Do that, and whenever you handle raw chicken, which I will do in a minute, you wanna go wash your hands, so I'm gonna let Caitlin, Caitlin do the shaking. <laughs> Woo! All right, so then the trick with this chicken is, what you wanna do is you preheat your oven to 350 degrees line a cookie sheet with some parchment paper and parchment paper is the trick not aluminum foil not wax paper parchment paper because a lot of times the breading is going to stick to some of the other coverings and parchment paper it won't so you take the parchment paper you spray it with a little bit of cooking spray that's all i did sprayed it and then once you're done with this which yeah, is you stay chickeny yep, i will stay chickeny <laughs> you just take it out and it's nicely coated as you can see I did a good job. You did a very nice job of coating <laughs> that. I'm proud of you. And then, there it is. There it is. All we're gonna do is put that on our cookie sheet, spray it down with a little bit more um, of the cookie spray and stick it in the oven for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I flip it over, spray it again, back in, and then it's good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Ready? Ready for the party. Ready for the party. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands. You wash your hands. I'll get started on the coleslaw yep. while Clara goes cleans up. So, we are using one of my favorite products ever. Shout out, <laughs> Shout out to Siggy's Dairy. Shout out to Siggy's Dairy. One of our favorite yogurt brands. We just really love that it's low in sugar. It's really good quality product, high in protein. So, we're going to be using that to make our creamy coleslaw. It's a nice alternative to mayo and it's lower again in saturated fat, which is one of those things that can lead to high cholesterol. So I have a 0% fat yogurt. I'm just going to portion out about three-fourths of a cup. Right. And we did have a question, what is Siggy's yogurt anyway? And here it is. Siggy's yogurt, we've actually worked with them a lot. They're really great about sending us product and coupons, and it's delicious. Lots of different flavors, lots of different talking about our love for Siggy's. I love of Siggy's. <laughs> okay, so I have about three-fourths of a cup going into the bowl. Now, 
Do you typically recommend Greek yogurt over traditional yogurt? I do, and the reason being is, one, it is higher in protein, mm -hmm. um, and it makes a great substitute for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, mayonnaise, sour cream, it really is, it really awesome. is it's delicious. It's a good marinade for chicken as well. It like is a buttermilk. Yep. So, we like that. Okay. Next, I'm going to do about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And two tablespoons of lemon juice. All right. Now, last question yes. that we got in, also about yogurt. Um, what is a good rule of thumb for choosing a nutritious yogurt? So, first and foremost, I choose a Greek yogurt because it's going to have the protein. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I look at sugar content because mm -hmm. sometimes those yogurt can be really high in sugar, especially when you've got the fruit flavorings and the yeah. crunchy toppings and stuff like that. All of that so. kind of good stuff. And that's actually you know, a really good point, you know, looking for a yogurt that has between, what would you say, 7 to 10 grams of sugar. Yeah, so naturally a plain yogurt is going to have some sugar. Yes. This has 5 grams of sugar in it. That's in the lactose. It's going to happen naturally. Yeah, and depending again on what the serving size is of the container, that's something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, really paying attention to that because that can add up on your sugar really quickly. And what I'll tell my clients is, you know, throw in your own fresh fruit. You know, zhuzh up your yogurt mm -hmm. however you want to. You know, that doesn't mean you have to sit there and eat plain yogurt because we definitely want it to taste good. But, you know, try and go in with a plain or even vanilla or lower sugar yogurt to try in. So I'm also going to add a touch of sweetness, about a tablespoon of honey. You can do regular sugar, it doesn't really matter, I just had honey on hand, it's easy to bring. And a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, just a little tang. perfect. You know, when you get a recipe, it doesn't have to be 100% exact. I'm also making a mess, but I'm doing about half a teaspoon of celery seed. And that's a pretty nice flavor. Classic coleslaw flavor oh, yeah. is that celery seed. Definitely. So, this will taste exactly like the coleslaw you would get. Maybe not exactly, but yeah. it's pretty good. <laughs> exactly. And I'm just going to do about a half a teaspoon of salt. Everything, I think. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm just going to whisk it up. Get everything nice and incorporated. Now I am all for saving time, so I go with the pre packaged yep. shredded cabbage. Mm -hmm or coleslaw mix, and there's nothing wrong with that, it saves mix. you time. But I recently have gotten into broccoli slaw, the yes. shredded broccoli, mm -hmm. good. Broccoli slaw, it's been, it's been a new thing. I, in my kitchen recently too, mm -hmm. it's very, very good. Like, very, All right, very I'm good. just gonna mix in this yogurty mixture with the cabbage. Mm -hmm. All right, so, Next we thing have question. We have a question have from a question? the viewers. Oh, what's our question? Okay, so the question is, what are some other foods that you could bake instead of frying? Ooh, that's good a one. good question. <laughs> I made something really good the other day. What, I made right? baked jalapeno poppers. Ooh, yum. Took a half of a jalapeno with a little bit of cream cheese and cheese and sprinkled on top and roasted and it. Baked it. That's what's right. Instead of the okay. deep fried version. Yeah, okay. Um, French fries. French fries are a big baked. one. I mean, any type of protein, I would say. Chicken, fish, beef, pork. I mean, really anything can be done in the done in the mm -hmm. oven. And honestly, it's a little less messy too. At least in my opinion. I don't know if you feel this way as I well. I don't know what to do with the oil when I've fried them. I know. There's a lot of leftover oil. <laughs> what do you do with it? Do you save it? Do you, you know, not put it down the sink? Don't put it down the sink. <laughs> don't put it down the sink. But you know, so I think any really kind of protein, any vegetable for the most part. And I tell people experiment with it. The nice thing with baking is you can bake different flavors at the same time. So this is great if you're meal prepping. You know, if you put a couple different types of vegetables on and season one one way and one the other way, then you at least have a little bit of variety when you come to meal prepping. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. Hmm. That's a good question. That was a very good question. All right. Now you want to see my coleslaw? 
course. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. Nice and creamy. Mm -hmm. With little celery seeds. I'm excited to try it. All right, so last thing that we're doing is we're making baked beans. So baked beans traditionally, you know, whether they come from a grocery store or in a can, um, can be very delicious. You know, beans definitely have their nutrition benefits. They're higher in fiber. They're a plant-based protein. Um, however, they also can be higher in sugar, higher in sodium sometimes as well. So we're going to be making our own baked beans today. You know, these can be done in the slow cooker. Um, or they can be done in the oven if you want to do it shorter, you know, shorter mm -hmm. on time. So all I did at this point is I chopped up some onion and now I'm just letting them caramelize. So you can see there's some nice color on that. So what we're going to do now is just pour in those beans. So I just have two cans of cannellini beans in here. And we're going to mix that up. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add in the spices. So we're going to add in about 15 ounces of tomato sauce, low sodium, mm -hmm. and then we're going to flavor this up a little bit. So let that cooks. So what we're going to do, what we're going to add to this is, so we're going to, there is going to be a little sweetness because they're baked beans and we want to make sure there's a little bit. We're going to use maple syrup though. Can I do this? this? Thank you. I'm going to use maple syrup. Um, so I'm putting in about um, just a couple tablespoons of this, about two. A little, bit of sweetness, a little bit of sweetness. And then we're gonna use my secret ingredient, liquid smoke. Liquid smoke. Yeah. Where do you get that? You can buy it in any grocery store. Where? In the um, like vinegar aisle. Oh. Yeah. So let me tell you about liquid smoke. All of this is, is they take some wood, they burn it and they take the smoke that comes out mm -hmm. and they condense it down into a liquid form. And then they remove all the soot and all the things that you don't want in it. But I mean, it's really, you know, there's one, two, three, four ingredients in this, you know, and it, look. yeah. There's no fat, sodium, carbohydrates, nothing in no, it. No, nothing just... in it. It's <laughs> just the flavoring. And honestly, a lot of times this is used in a lot of different things. You know, if you have smoked cheeses or certain even like mm -hmm. meat products that they say are smoked. So you're putting quite a bit in, so yeah. it's not super strong. No. So you want to, because the, we're not using any barbecue sauce in these baked beans, mm -hmm. barbecue sauce is a pretty traditional um, ingredient when it comes to baked beans, but it can be higher in sugar. So we really want to make sure that this, okay. um, the smokiness comes through. So I just used about four tablespoons of it okay. in there. Um, and then also, I'm going to use a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I need about a tablespoon as well. Mix that in. Right. So we just used canned beans. Yes, we did. And a lot of people are like, well, do I need to cook my own beans to reduce the sodium, things like that? I just use a low sodium mm -hmm. canned bean and then rinse it really well. Mm -hmm. Drain it and rinse it. And you get rid of a bit of the sodium that way. Yeah, and it's a great, you know, um, time saver. You know, if you're trying to pull together baked beans for a barbecue because, you know, things are busy and you didn't have time to plan, um, you know, trying, you have to soak and cook your own beans will take, will take a bit of time. So this is really easy. And I'm not actually adding any added salt to this because the beans have their own sodium in there. All right, so, and then one thing I did add was Dijon mustard. So. Did That's it. it. Yep, added a little bit of Dijon. And from this point, you want to let it simmer for about five minutes. At this point, you can either put it in a um, baking pan and bake it in the oven about 325 for 50 minutes, or toss it in your slow cooker for four to six hours on low. You don't have to think about it. Perfect. Yep. It couldn't get any easier. All right, so are we ready to try some of should this? Should we try something? I think we should. And so we have had, do a little switch. So we did pre-bake some of our chicken. Yep. Save a little time. Look how good that looks. It looks really good. Nice and crispy. Okay. Take a look. Ooh. And then we also have our beans. Okay, are we gonna we're gonna plate it up. Put some up. Yep. Do you want a, a drumstick? Yeah, give me, I'll take a drumstick. I think that's a little bit easier to eat. Yes, on camera, I would agree. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna put some of this beans on here. Nice and baked and nice. I can smell the smokiness. Mm. It smells like it came out of a barbecue pit. Just like this. Some of that mm. coleslaw on that there. Coleslaw on there. Pretty. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm excited to try this. I am too. Ready? Okay. What are you going to go for first? 
I think the coleslaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just dropped some. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. The stickies is so creamy. Mm -hmm. We don't miss the mayonnaise at all. I'm down with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw some beans next. Beans. I just thought you were my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Alright. That smoke is so cool. Right? It's so good. I like it. Alright. Okay, it. we got two winning recipes. Go for a third. Go for a third. Cheers. Cheers. So good. So good, right? So it's good. nice and moist from the buttermilk marinade. Mm -hmm. You know, it is skinless, so you're not really missing any of that. I know, but the, the coating stayed on really nicely. It's crispy. Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy. That's a winner, too. Yeah. All right. All right. Do we have any more questions? No. no. Nope. All right. All right. Well, well thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. These recipes will be available on our website later, mm -hmm. and they'll be, we'll post a link below so you can go and check them out for yourself. Oh, yeah. Have a All good right. day. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.